Good evening, Bula Vinaka and Namaste. This is Fiji Village Straight Talk. I'm Vijay Narayan and tonight we've got another party leader. Of course, uh, last night we had Varinava Tiko, the acting uh, leader of the New Generation Party. Tonight, uh, the leader of Sodelpa, Viliame Ngavoka, is in studio and we will talk to him about uh, the policies, uh, the party structure, uh, what is Sodelpa about and what is Sodelpa bringing to the party when it comes to the 2022 general elections? First of all, on behalf of our viewers and listeners, uh, Mr. Ngavoka, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Thank you, Vijay. Um, this is a uh, quite a quite a welcome uh, opportunity for us to um, to share with our people uh, on uh, what Sodelpa is all about, and also um, as part of the preparation for our people to make the very important decision on the 14th of uh, December how they wish to be governed over the next four years. So, yeah, well, it's quite an exciting time. Huh? And definitely people are looking forward to uh, what you will have to offer. We'll go into that. Uh, also, Sodelpa uh, has been around for some time, of course, uh, the former SDL party. And uh, after that, with some electoral changes uh, following the events of 2006, uh, mm -hmm. where you cannot have uh, uh, names, uh, it okay names uh, as parties or uh, Vernacular, vernacular names in parties, mm. uh, then it was decided, uh, the founders of uh, the former SDL uh, decided to then change to Sodelpa. Uh, Mr. Ngavoka, you uh, definitely as leader of Sodelpa uh, and uh, going into elections, we've got five weeks, the sixth week uh, will be uh, the date, uh, December 14th, when people go to the polls. Just a question about Sodelpa heading into next month's general elections. Your slogan says time for change. Please explain to the people why. Yes, um, we have had um, eight years of, a, um, of what I would re you know, call as a dictatorship, a, 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 um, a parliamentary one, that is. Um, and beyond that was uh, eight years of, uh, of a regime. Um, we were living pretty much in the uh, in darkness until we uh, we became a parliamentary democracy in 2014. So all up, it's been 16 years of the same crowd running this country. Um, and I, we believe we believe very sincerely that it is time it is time for change. Eh? I will elaborate on that um, uh, in the course of the of the evening, but you know, 16 years uh, with this type of leadership, uh, this slogan "Time for Change" not only does it resonate with everyone in this country, from the farmer to the senior executive anywhere and uh, you know, in any executive suit. Mr. Gavoka, just uh, in relation to Sodelpa itself, we'll start off with the party. It has had a uh, quite a rough ride with people within the party having opposing views, eventually leaving recently, including your previous leader, Mr. Silvini Rambuka, who resigned from parliament. Now others have left. How do you see these events as Sodelpa leader? Vijay, um, as you were saying earlier on, we were the SDL uh, 2001. Um, and then we became... Uh, Sodelpa, for reasons you have uh, articulated, um, we would be the longest surviving party, Itoke party in the country, longer than Sodelpa, um, the Alliance Party, Aura Tumara, longer than Rambuka's SVT. So in terms of um, stability uh, as a party, we are, we are the party that has been there, and you have seen it all. You know, we won two elections. Uh, got overthrown, we came back in opposition, and been, and been doing a pr pretty good job of it. Um, so, in terms of choices, um, there isn't much um, in terms of what is out there. So, Delpa would offer the best option to, to, uh, to most people in the, in the country today. Yeah? We've been in opposition for eight years now. Yes, we've had the turmoil, uh, the breakup in the party. 
But um, as I've, uh, I've said on many occasions, we were the SDL. Under our umbrella, we brought in Kambi, we brought in SVT, we brought in PDP, we brought in One Fiji. The, the, it, it was a noble uh, experiment to be united under one umbrella and be one. But you, when you bring in people uh, like that, you're bringing in uh, a number of ideologies. Eh? And reconciling them can be, can be very difficult. Eh? In any political parties, uh, policies, there's always be tension around policies. Eh? It is just unfortunate that our people who have left could not understand that those tensions are part and parcel of, of democracy. Yeah? And then they decided to leave uh, because they could not have their own way yeah? within the party. Yeah? Now, it's still, it's still happening. You had another situation over the weekend where comments were made that the acting deputy leader could not be endo endorsed in the special general meeting. And uh, there were some comments that you need some women executives. Your thoughts on this? That was a very unfortunate one, uh, Vijay. It, it was really um, uh, a process that needed to be observed. Uh, it was corrected in the, a, in the SGMs, you know, which, which said, look, you cannot make the changes now. We will continue with the acting deputy, deputy leader until after the elections, which is, which, which is uh, who, who was elected, appointed by the management board. But to be, to be, uh, to, uh, to appoint a deputy party leader, sub, you know, a substantive one, would need a process, and the process of, uh, you know, free, fair, and all that, eh, to, to choose one. Um, th that was corrected in the, in the uh, SGM on Saturday. And, you know, uh, some people disagreed, um, but it's part and, part and parcel of politics, you know, like I said, there's always tension in policies and, and, and things like that. It is unfortunate that one of the media companies uh, picked it up and ran a very uh, negative story about it. Eh? I, mean, I mean, headlines over two days. I, I, you know, I've taken issue with that with a particular media uh, outlet. Um, it was just, you know, we've been dealing with them with them in good in good faith, and uh, the way they ran that story, with uh, you know, it was first the, the feud and then party in stormy waters. I mean, that was uncalled for, you know, really. It was a wonderful occasion when I announced my 54 candidates. You know, you, you see it on you see it on the Facebook. Uh, you know, the comments we got about 30,000. You know, you know, over, over the weekend, the comments were so positive. It was this this story that kind of ruined it for us. But but you know, uh, we've been through that. But tell me, was there an intention to? endorse the acting deputy leader as the deputy leader in that meeting or it was supposed to happen another time another time it was supposed to happen another time but but you know there, there was a difference of opinion that it could be brought up and fast track it through a sgm but sgms are uh, confined to the specific items on the agenda so there, there, there was a bit of uh, contention on that whether we could do it or whether it would have to wait another time but really, it was not a big issue. Um, Storm in a teacup, really. But like I said, somebody made headlines out of it, and you depends know. how big is the teacup. Uh, it was a small teacup. I tell you what, <laughs> we all went, we all went home, uh, enjoying and rejoicing that we had our lineup endorsed by the general assembly. So Delta is the only party in Fiji that has to take its candidates to the general assembly to be endorsed. The only party. Um, and we did that, it was wonderful, you know, the blessings by the Talatala. And then the discussion on this one, somebody picked it up and ran a story that was... So you believe all in all, everything turned out positive absolutely, over the weekend? Absolutely, 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 uh, Vijay, absolutely. Yeah. Now we've talked about this before in interviews. As Sodelpa leader, it's, it's, it's definitely quite a challenge for you. It's been, it's been quite a ride for you so far. <laughs> True, uh, Vijay. I became uh, leader in December 2020, and you are right. It has been a rough ride. Uh, I think from the first week, um, you know, people are saying, "Oh, come on, give it up." Uh, you know, you are this, you are that, and and of course, the um, the attorney general relationship was a huge part of that of the equation. Eh? Uh, but I'm here today uh, with a very strong team of 54. 
uh, it's been very stormy weather um, here today. We are the first party with a manifesto, uh, to be in a releasing a manifesto, meeting all the requirements of uh, section 1164C of the electoral acts. So, you know, while, everyone, while people have been well, speculating with all sorts of uh, mischievous stuff, we have been doing the work, the groundwork, and I tell you, Vijay, we are very confident about December 14. And let, let, me, let me just um, backtrack a bit. It actually starts around the 4th or the 5th, the pre-polling. Yeah? We'll go there. Pre-polling actually yeah. starts on in actual fact. I mean, mm. majority of the people vote on December 14th, but pre-polling is from December 5th to December 9th. And that is far to reach areas, even places like Naita Siri, mm. the Maritime Islands, etc. That's where people will cast their votes between December 5th and December 9th, allocated time. So, and you're talking about about 70,000 votes. A vote close, to, close to more than 70,000. Yeah, so that's, yes. that's quite a huge chunk of the, of the voting population. Eh? Mm. Now going back to the leadership and uh, everything that you've seen as far as the challenges are concerned, how... Certain are you that you can bring in stability based on what has transpired within the party? I now have uh, a team of 54 candidates and they are fully united behind me. They are with me. Now you, you look at it this way, Vijay. You know, if, if there was instability in the party, if there was a question mark, would I have attracted these 54 guys? I mean, these are quality people, high caliber. You've you, you got to meet them. I'm, I'm, you know, sometimes I just look at myself and say, I'm blessed that I have all these guys with me. They joined the party knowing full well the party leader is BG. Yeah? This is the guy who supposedly have a lot of, uh, you know, who's been attacked for almost two years. But they chose to be part of me because they saw something there. They saw uh, a person who is uh, inclusive, a person who really cares, a person who is very clear on what he wants to accomplish for the country. You on Straight Talk uh, on Fiji Village. I'm VJ Narayan, our guest tonight, Sadelpa leader, William Ngavoka. Mr. Ngavoka, how can you now moving forward? Definitely one of the biggest issues is about accountability in leadership. What is your view on leaders to be held accountable all the time? Do you see that as being uncomfortable or a personal attack on you? Um, Vijay, um, personal attacks is, is part and parcel of politics. Eh? I, I'm just, um, it's just sad that uh, it can be a little, too, a, little bit, a, bit, a little bit too personal sometimes. But, you know, um, you, you want to join the, this kind of, uh, you know, you want to get into politics, you've got to be prepared for it. Eh? And um, I was in America lately, and one of the guys here said, you know, sir, what have you been through for two years? You're qualified to be prime minister. So, you know, you, if, if, you, if you can survive all this, you know, you, you should be a leader of the, leader of the country. And, uh, and that is, and, and that is uh, something that I, I value greatly, the experience I've been through. And, I, and I've kept it, I've kept it uh, together. Uh, and I've always remained cool. Um, and in five weeks' time, things can, you know, something might change in this country. And I'm very confident that the change will be towards Delta. Now, we've also got uh, questions coming in, uh, 3314766 or 7730766 th are the numbers uh, to call uh, with your questions. Uh, you can also post your questions with the hashtag Fiji Village Street Talk. We have uh, a caller on the line, if we can listen to that question. Thank you. We should have already do the same thing as Fiji has been giving for the loan and the grant to help us start off with business or, or to expand our business.
it's here somewhere in my in my in my uh, in my manifesto um uh, Vijay, um, we'll come back to that uh, yeah. so that you can mm. clarify for the yeah. people. We'll, mm. we'll move on uh, to the next question online. Thank you. Yes, uh, just one question, sir, in terms of uh, for the free education, sir. Uh, uh, where we can get the money from for the tertiary education? Okay, thank you. This is the, um, a signature policy for Sodalpa. It's, uh, it's something that we've been fighting for in the floor of parliament since 2014. It was just unfortunate that uh, when the new party leader came in 2018, he did not go for this. He went for the, that old uh, Fijian Affairs Scholarship. Eh? But for us, uh, in a country where, where we want everyone to be equal, we want free tertiary for everyone. It'll cost about $200 million. We've done the sums. Um, and uh, the institutions, uh, all the universities in Fiji, and a number of uh, technical colleges uh, across the country. Um, the funding is there. Uh, we will be increasing taxes in some parts of the, um, in some parts of the, uh, the, the company taxes. Uh, but if, if you look into our, if you visit our website, we outline specifically on where the funds are going to come from in terms of increased revenues for, for the government. Uh, you, you'll notice if you go into our website that we will have a, a bigger uh, revenue than governments and a lower deficit than the, than the government of today. Yeah? But we have done the sums. It's $200 million. We can find that to ensure that our people can go to university and do their first degree. You can go to technical college and get a certificate or a diploma. The idea being that no one should be without qualification or without any skills. We, we've done it. It can be done and we will do it. And I believe some other parties are also saying the same thing. So it's not only uh, we, we, are the, we are kind of the leader here and other parties will follow suit. And I believe one has already uh, done that in terms of free tertiary, yeah? yeah. Uh, well, it has been announced in a manifesto. Uh, so I think Unity Fiji, in their manifesto, they did uh, it okay. after. Yeah. But you announced your manifesto first, so... We were the first. Unity Fiji. We were the first. Like I said, I, I think other parties will follow suit because um, it is something that they do in uh, Barbados, in Sri Lanka, in Germany, and other countries, uh, providing free tertiary for their people. And, you know, the... The reasons are very simple. A highly educated people execute better. I can tell you stories. I've been an employer. I can tell you stories when I, am, when I ran an organization with a high content of graduates. They were finishing my sentences. I mean, it was quite uh, like night and day, moving from one company to the other, where the, uh, the, the uh, people were, were degree, were, were highly trained people. Huh? So it's good for the country. Uh, and, and, and that's... And that's so 200 million, you will find it and you'll ensure that people go and get education right up to tertiary education yes. for free. For free. When will this start? Um, as soon as you come into government in 2023, it'll start. So it'll start next year. Next year, yeah. For next year's education yes. system. Yes. There's a lot of questions um, and I'll just <clears throat> ask that on behalf of uh, the people who have been asking. Cancellation of TELS debt. Yeah. Some people are saying they, they have tells that uh, amounting to even up to $30,000, hard to pay. Um, they do not have a job. And they've seen the Sodelpa Manifesto saying it will be forgiven. If you can elaborate on yeah. that, please. Vijay, the total amount owing to government by students, uh, the last time it was reported in, in Parliament was about $571 million. Just under $600 million. Eh? And we believe that our children, our youth, should not be burdened with something like that, yeah? I went to my first employment when I became an employee. I wasn't carrying a debt like that. Can you imagine joining the workforce and you're carrying a $30,000 debt? It, it would paralyze you for, quite a, you know, for quite a number of years when you should be investing in your house, in your car, and all this stuff. Eh? But it is a simple book entry. You're now owed $571 million. You take that off. 
it does not affect the economy of the country. That's it. It's, it's a book entry. It's a book entry. Uh, Where will you do that? First thing for you to do is delete that book entry? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it, it is not. See, the only income you get from that is the repayment down the years. Eh? And the repayment has been quite uh, insignificant. You know, the repayment has been, I think, about one or two million dollars a year. A lot of people can't pay. Yeah? So remove it and move on. What do you have to say to those parties who may say this is a pie in the sky kind of incentive? It's not a pie in the sky, Vijay. You just remove the, the, the debt from the books. It's a write-off. Um, and that's it. That's it. It's a book entry. So that's the answer for you from uh, William Ngavoka, the leader of Sodelpa. Uh, mm. Get into office. If they do form government, they will write off that book entry uh, of TELS debt and continue to give free education yes. uh, with no loans at all. And, you know, and, and I, might, I, just, I might just add that we are not alone. Eh? The, the U.S. is doing the same thing right now. Eh? Theirs is running into trillions, eh? one trillion dollars. And Biden is now writing thereof now. So, so you know, uh, it's something that we need to do to empower you, our youth. Eh? And, and in Fiji, I want to empower them. I went into a supermarket one day. And these two young ladies came up and said, sir, you, you, you're, a you're really going to remove all these tells? I said, yes, I will. And they could just see the relief on their faces. You know, they was university graduates shopping, you know, saving in a shop and carrying this burden, you know, with them. Eh? How do you think, how big of an issue do you think it is for the young people of this country at the moment, this tells that? Oh, it's huge. It's really big. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy talking to the youth. I, I just, you know, you, you, you and I, you know, we, uh, we love the youth, right? And we want them to be free, to be productive and all that. When I see them carrying that burden, I believe some even carry as high as $100,000. Eh? So if you have the power to remove it from them, remove it. That was Delphi. We have the political will to do it, Vijay. I mean, that's, it comes down to that. You're not, a... you're not going to dilly-dally. You know, the political will is there, we'll do it. There was another question about some people who have gone down the path of foundation and not doing year 13 and being denied certain uh, options as far as tells, toppers are concerned. What's your view on that? Vijay, if you get an acceptance letter from the institutions, you go in for free. If the USP writes to you and says you are now accepted into this course, you go in for free. FNU, University of Fiji, any technical college. You get an acceptance letter, you go in for free. That's it. Some questions from USP students. What will Mr. Ngavoka do? More than $60 million not given in government grants by the current government. What will you do? USP, uh, you know, is an institution. And, you know, we, are, we have always been proud to have USP here in Fiji. Yeah? You know, I go back to the time when USP was just starting. Yeah? Um, you know, no, we were just so proud to have USP here, you know. Um, it is the, the only equal equivalent to it is the University of the West Indies. You know, um, I think all the West Indies countries, same, same as the uh, USP. Yeah? So to me, for this government to do that to USP is really you know, it's difficult to understand. And I have asked a number of questions in Parliament. You know, in the last debate, the Minister of the Economy did not even have a budget for USP. You know, the, the normal the normal um, support they normally get, about 30 million kind of dollars. I said, it, I thought you were going to delay this, but now it's not even in the books. I mean, how can you do this? Eh? And, I, and I, you know, he, he couldn't answer that. Eh? You, you cannot just, <laughs> you cannot just say no, or you cannot just ignore, totally ignore, an institution of the stature of USP. It's, it's uh, just difficult to explain. Eh? So Delpa will honor that commitment. We will make up for what is owed to USB. I think more than sixty million dollars. Yes, at this absolutely. Point. We've got it in. We have it in our, in our manifesto, in our costings. Yeah. And how quickly will USB get the money if you come in? It'll be as soon as we get in. Um, if if it's a matter of uh, cash flow issues, we will make sure that it'll, it's given to them over a period of time. I mean, how long have they been denied? There? Two or three years? So. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So we, 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 will, we will give it to them within, within you know, within, within the year. Yeah. This is Fiji Village Trade Talk. I'm Vijay Narayan. 
our guest tonight, the leader of Sodelpa, Mr. William Ngavoka, will be back after this break. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess we started. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, question, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any, I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? DG First Why? cannot intervene into a personal Absolutely matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when he came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not Hand me. on your heart. It's him. No, you're, uh, a no, you're a joke. No, you are a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. Don't bring it up. We don't no, no, I didn't bring it up. You were commander. But yes, every but military officer and serviceman at the time was under your command. forgotten you trade them. Bulubinaka, this is Fiji Village Street Talk. I'm VJ Narai. VG Village Trade Talk with VJ Narayan, sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor, living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess we started. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, question, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any, I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? DG First Bye. cannot intervene into a personal Absolutely matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when he came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not Hand me. on your heart. It's him. No, you're, uh, a uh, no, you're a joke. No, you are a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. Don't bring it up. We don't no, no, I didn't bring it up. You were a commander. But yes, every but military officer and serviceman mm -hmm. at the time was under your command. forgotten you trade them. Bulovinaka, this is Fiji Village Street Talk. I'm VJ Narai. VG Village Trade Talk with VJ Narayan, sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor, living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess we started. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, question, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any, I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? DG First Bye. cannot intervene into a personal matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when he came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not Hand me. on your heart. It's him. But, no, you're uh, a joke. Uh, no, you're you a are a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. Don't bring that up. We don't. No, no, I didn't bring it up. You were commander. But yes, every military officer and serviceman at the time was under your command. forgotten you trade them. Bulovinaka, this is Fiji Village Street Talk. I am VJ Narayan. VG Village Trade Talk with VJ Narayan, sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor, living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess we started. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, question, you are wanting to... Welcome back. This is Fiji Village Street Talk. I'm VJ Narayan. Our <coughs> guest tonight, Sodelpa leader, William Ngavoka. Mr. Ngavoka, you have those numbers for SMEs that you wanted to clarify for that caller. Yes, Vijay. Uh, for the economic support for women, women participation in SME is $5 million. For youth economic participation in SME is $5 million. And $2 million for small business enterprises, fusion center for vulnerable groups. 
So there are three categories there, five, five, and two, twelve million dollars in all. Huh? Thank you, Mr. Navoka, for that clarification for that caller. We have a caller on the line, Jay Singh of Lothala Beach. <coughs> In regards to uh, what, what sort of uh, stance uh, do they have in terms of uh, promoting uh, multiculturalism in the country to ensure that there are no policies which are racist? Everyone is treated fairly. Mr. Navoka, uh, Jay is asking if uh, you can talk about your policies about multiculturalism so that there is no racist policies by Sodelpa. Oh, okay. Um, Thank you, Vijay. Look, I, I'm one person who is very proud of the, um, of the heterogeneous makeup of our country. We are very cosmopolitan. We are very unique in this part of the world. And I, and I, and I applaud that. And I, I always say that I'm, when I'm overseas and I hear English, Hindi, and Itoke being spoken, I know I'm in Fiji. Yeah? So, yes, um, we are very much committed to that. We will be, we will be reopening that Ministry of uh, Ethnic Affairs, eh? of Multi-Ethnic Affairs. Eh? We believe that's, the, that's where we can serve the needs of, um, of all the other communities outside of the Itoke communities. Eh? We, we are uh, focusing quite a bit on uplifting the um, economic well-being of the Itoke, but we will, I, th I think it was an SDL um, uh, program at the time to start the Multi-Ethnic Affairs Ministry. Eh? And that, and that's, and I believe, <coughs> will help us uh, strengthen that um, that uh, cosmopolitan makeup of the country and culturally be, you know, be inclusive in, in the in, in the way we run our our, our nation. Eh? Mm. Now, question about cost of living. Uh, poverty remains a major concern. People are concerned about increasing food prices, getting harder to put food on the table. According to the Fiji Bureau of Statistics, uh, the Household Income and Expenditure Survey, uh, this is before COVID-19, uh, mm -hmm. that was done, 24.1% uh, of Fijians, uh, which came to about 208,021 people, mm -hmm. uh, and that's 45,724 households uh, who are living below the poverty line. The other interesting thing is that the basic needs poverty line, according to this statistic, is $41.91 per adult equivalent. That is the basic needs poverty line. $41.91 a week. To, do you mm. think that the poverty line, first of all, needs to go <coughs> up based on that basic needs line? That means it will definitely be more than 208,000 people. And there was another issue about the ethnic data that was removed because it was stated that it's not needed. Uh, a need is a need. A poor person is a poor person, irrespective of mm, race. Mm. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Let me start with the last part of the question, uh, uh, you know, relating to the, uh, the ethnicity of the, uh, of the data. We disagree with that eh? because um, there are specific needs you know, in every community. Eh? You, you cannot just say, okay, everyone here uh, is poor. Uh, we will use, we'll introduce one solution for all. Eh? It, it doesn't work that way. Um, we believe that you, can, you, uh, you need to segregate the, um, the, uh, the, the, the people in the area and, and determine what, what is really there that you can do to help them. Eh? Look, it's, it's something that we have argued about in Parliament for quite some time. And, you know, we just don't understand the developed countries, democracies, do this. The Americans, the British, the Australians, the New Zealanders. And the, the ethnicity features very strongly in, in the way they, um, they apply uh, remedies and solutions to, to issues. Eh? But in Fiji, um, we, we believe in, in all this one, one whatever, uh, which, which is, which, you remember that we, we, we fired the, they fired the CEO of... Uh, you uh, didn't fire. No, no, the, 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 the government fired the, the guy who... Uh, the uh, CEO of the, the Bureau, Bureau of Stats. Eh? And, and what, what he was saying was quite true. We know that. 
that poverty is, is very uh, pronounced in the, uh, in the villages, uh, especially amongst the Itoke, and, and even in, on, on, on the religious basis. Eh? We, we should not be afraid of highlighting things like that. Eh? Um, and, and I think this, this government is just fearful uh, of, of facing the truth. Eh? So we will go back into ethnicity to determine uh, what is out there so that we can really come up Proper with... Proper ethnic data breakdown. Yeah. Coming back to my question, what will you do about cost of living? Okay. Um, first, the, um, the basic food items, um, there'll be no vet on them. Uh, you know, it took the government a long time to do that. We were crying for it. We were, you know, stressing that in the floor of parliament. You no, know, don't take away vat out of these, uh, you know, the rice, the flour, and all, all the basic stuff. They were saying that, yeah, you're going to lose $100 million in, uh, in, in, um, in revenue, government revenue. Eventually, they came around to it. But that will stay. Um, PJ, the minimum wage, eh? it has to go up. We have established through, through agencies who, look at, who, who, who work on this thing that the living wage per family is $200 a week. Eh? That's it. And we were, introdu we're introducing a $5 an hour minimum wage, 40 hours a week, that's $200. That will happen. Immediately we come into, into power, minimum wage will go to $200. There will be no more $41 the one that you were referring to. That's the basic needs poverty line. So I, 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 don't, I don't really subscribe to that. I, I just want people to get paid a decent amount of money. Okay? Um, and what we do now is we also upgrade the... Um, you know, the house duties, the domestic duties uh, kind of uh, work, we'll also make them uh, minimum, you know, we'll also introduce minimum wage for them. $5 an hour. $5 an hour. So, so if you have a security officer living in one of the informal settlements, he'll earn $200 a week, and his wife is domestic duties, she'll earn $200 a week. That's $100 a week in the family. And that's immediate if you come into government. Immediately, yes. Now, what, uh, as far as civil servants' contracts are concerned, there's some civil servants, uh, for fear of victimization, they have not put their names to this question. What is your stand on civil servants' contracts? Vijay, the civil service is a lifetime calling, Mr. Delpa. Lifetime calling. And you monitor them through a performance monitoring system. This OMRS thing is a flop. Uh, we, will, we will abolish that and bring in lifetime contracts, um, you know, uh, with the PMS in place. Eh? Performance Look, management system. Yeah, performance management system. Look, they, they are a stabilizing factor in any country, especially for Fiji. You know, we've been through 87. We, were, we went through 2000, 2006. There was no governance. Things fell apart. The civil service held it together. I salute those people. They kept things going, and I want them to be to be stable. I want them to feel comfortable. Uh, I want them to have, you know, um, contracts, a, a long term, a long term contract. Like like in my days, I was a civil servant in my in my first job. I, I signed up for for life, you know, um, and you know I, I was prepared to grow into the into the service to the highest level of the of the, of the uh, you know in the in, in the in the particular agency, yeah? and. We will take back retirement to 60 years, not 55. Huh? So there's going to be a lot of stability with Sodalpa in the civil service. And we go into capacity building, and PMS will be very dominant in the, in the way we monitor their performance. That's it. The cutoff mark for TELS and higher education uh, year 13 programs will remain according to the budget supplement 2022 2023, but the cutoff mark will be 250. For commerce, the cut-off mark will be 280, except for accounting, economics, management, administration, where the cut-off mark will be 300. So, currently, in this budget announcement, there's cut-off marks if you qualify, if you want to qualify for TELS. How will you do things? Vijay, like I said earlier, if you get a letter, an offer from the institution saying that you are you have qualified to enter our university or technical college, technical college, you, you go in for free. I've got a question. Yeah, I've got a question from Isaiah Twinraki now. How would you address the education curriculum 
to arouse the interest of the child in attending classes and to enable the child to be well equipped to thrive in their future life? Uh, wonderful question. Great question. You know, one of my, um, one of my concerns, um, Vijay, is that when you bring in free tertiary, free education, eh? um, I, I don't want people to be relaxed about it. I, I don't want people to say, you know, um, only certain people are getting it. Um, you know what I mean? It will bring, bring up uh, the issue about certain people, only certain people are getting, are getting this, this, this uh, free stuff. Eh? My, my, um, my focus will be to bring up the schools in the rural areas to ensure that they are as good as the schools in the, in the urban areas. Eh? I was chairman of a local school, village school in Nduvu, uh, and I just knew at the time, I said, there's no way our kids here can compete with the guys in the, in, in the, uh, in, in the urban areas. Eh? So you want to bring that up. Eh? And when you talk about that, bring them up, it, it's a whole community thing. Eh? I have, I have an advisor with me, a school teacher, who went to an island in Laudidia, started a new high school, and he had 100% pass in Form 7. He's the, kind of, he's the kind of guy who's advising me on, on the education thing. And I, and I want his moral to be applied across the country. Yeah. There's questions coming in about uh, our skilled laborers are leaving, our skilled workers are leaving, and we cannot keep up. There's restaurants where they have had to get people in from Philippines to come and cook here, while our people have gone to other countries. And uh, it is concerning because people are just leaving. One of the things has been said that it's a positive thing that people are going for greener pastures. What's yeah. your comment? Vijay, in the new, the new world economy, labor mobility is very much part of it. Eh? You, you cannot put a stop to it. And, and I, uh, one thing that I would have to say now, um, as soon as we become government, we will sign PESA Plus. You know, PESA Plus is the trade agreement, trade thing between the trade structure in, the, in this part of the world. Eh? Our government today has refused to sign PESA Plus. We will do it. We want to be part of the trading bloc in every sense of the word. And when you do that, you, you uplift the standard of this country the regulations in this country to meet the demand, you know, the, the standards of the, of the, you know, the Australians and the New Zealanders. And when you do that, you also qualify for the U.S. and for Europe. Eh? So, um, labor mobility, um, we want to train people in Fiji to harmonize the standards in Fiji to our neighbors. And the electrician in Fiji should be able to practice as an electrician in Australia and New Zealand, a plumber or whatever, okay? Now, the concern is the brain drain, yeah? That is where our, our education policy kicks in. We will educate more people. Our technical colleges will be producing more electricians, more plumbers, more bricklayers, painters, and all that. That needs to be expedited because Absolutely. people are living in it, it, will be, it will be. We will look at ways to expedite it. Do you know that a um, couple of months ago we lost 60 accountants to Australia? Mm -hmm. You know that, eh? Yes. So, that, that, that's where we, we will we'll need to, we'll to mass-produce, virtually mass-produce. We look at the education, uh, the education system if you can. You know, like, can you, can you quicken, can you fast-track, you know, the, just has more classes instead of all these breaks. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we And ensuring to, quality and is, quantity is, at the quality. same time. Yes, absolutely, yeah. But, but you know, I, I, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to stop our people from going abroad uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and, and when that happens, the wages in the country will also rise, eh? you know, because people, people will be paid according to, um, to the demand, eh? uh, you know, to their skills. You know, if I have my skills and you want me to be a cook, if Australia is paying me $80,000 80, a year, you, can't, you cannot be paying me $15,000 a year to work in Fiji. So some, something will happen, you know, the, the, I, I'm actually quite excited about it. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about um, losing out, Fiji losing out. And it will result in more remittances too, money coming back. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I've got a caller here from Nambua, Naveen Kafin. Uh, he's got three questions. How will Sodelpa continue with the scholarship under the current structure or will they introduce the new system? We will totally abolish stoppers 
and tells. Totally gone. And everybody gets everybody free gets, tertiary education yeah. as long as you get an, uh, a letter from the university yeah. confirming your place. Once, once your place is confirmed, you go in for free. Yeah. Next question. Will Sodelpa consider coalition with NFP? Uh, Vijay, um, right now, uh, we are all campaigning on our own platforms. We'll cross that bridge when we get, when we get to it. That bridge is not far away. We'll get there, though. <laughs> how would foreign policy towards China, how, how would the foreign policy be towards China under a Sodelpa government? Vijay, we will stay close to our traditional uh, allies, eh? and that is the British Commonwealth and the, the Americans and the Europeans. Eh? We will work with them uh, and, and, um, and, and then be part of their policy with China and other countries that are outside of the traditional alliances that we had. Um, I, we will welcome uh, whatever uh, we can do on a bilateral basis with China, but on matters of security and things like that, we will tag very close to Australia and New Zealand in the way we relate to that part of the to, uh, to China. So matters of security, etc. Yeah, no deals with China. No. That's uh, Mr. William Engavoka making it clear as far as Sodelpa's stand is concerned. We'll be back after this break. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess in the study. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, who, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any, I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? First Why? cannot intervene into a personal matter. Absolutely, you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when he came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not hand on your heart. It's him. No, you're a joke. Uh, no, you're a joke. 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 Don't bring it up. We don't. No, no, I gotta bring it up. You were commander. But yes, every military officer and serviceman at the time was under your. You've forgotten. You trade them. Bulovinaka. This is Fiji Village Street Talk. I am VJ Narayan. Fiji Village Straight Talk with VJ Narayan, sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor, living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess in the study. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, who, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any, I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? Fiji First Why? cannot intervene into a personal matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when he came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not Hand me. on your heart. It's him. No, you're uh, a joke. Uh, no, you you're are a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. Don't bring that up. We don't. No, no, I gotta bring it up. You were commander. But yes, but every military officer and serviceman at the time was under your command. If you've forgotten, you trade them. Bulovinaka. This is Fiji Village Street Talk. I am VJ Narayan. Fiji Village Straight Talk with VJ Narayan, sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor, living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page. Welcome back. You're on uh, Fiji Village Straight Talk. I'm VJ Narayan, our guest tonight. Sodelpa leader William Engavoka, and we're talking about the journey in the elections. Of course, December 14, majority of the people cast their votes. Uh, Pre-poll voting starts on uh, December 5th and runs till December 9th. Uh, we have another question here from a Tomasi. What is the assurance, Mr. Ngavoka, that Sodelpa will not work with Fiji first? He asks this question due to Mr. Ngavoka's connection with Fiji First General Secretary, Ayaz Said Kayu. 
Ugye, um, coalition is something that will has its own, um, you know, uh, there's, I've talked to my guys, the experienced people in the party, and I say, how does it work? And they say, look, those two days, when you have to form government, you have to be prepared for anything. So, um, in the event that nobody gets over the threshold, uh, I'm told that... Um, you mean, they, uh, no one gets absolute majority? No, right. If somebody, if no one gets over 28 seats, there's going to be a lot of haggling. And um, I've been told by the experienced people in the party that nothing is off the table, nothing is off the books. Eh? So we'll get to it when we get to it. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's the only thing I can say right now. Eh? Yeah. So it's on the table, all parties. Yeah. If we come into a situation, and we've never had 55-seat parliament. Of course, we had the old system at 71 seats. Right. And uh, then the new system, 50 seats, based on increase in registered voters, 51 seats yeah. in uh, 2018, and now based on increase in registered voters, 55 seats. Of course, uh, that is according to the Constitution. 55 seats, 28 seats you need. No party makes absolute yeah. majority. Game on Game with any on. party. <coughs> I, I, I've been told... My question, game yeah. on with any party or not? Uh, the reality of it, Vijay, is that... Again, my question, <laughs> game on with any party or not? You have to be realistic here. You have to be realistic. Um, you talk to just about everyone. Everyone. Around, 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 during that period. You've got two days of very intense negotiation. You'll talk to everyone. Apparently, that's the way it's done. You, um, everything is on the table. Um, that's what I'm told, that you talk to everyone. I, I you know, uh, there are people who are, who are saying that you don't talk to this guy, you don't talk to that guy, but I'm told realistically it doesn't you, work that You way. are the leader. You are mm. the leader of Sadelpa. What's mm. your thought on that? Um, Jay, um, we'll cross the bridge when we get to it. I, I you know, what, what, I, what I've been... I mean, I'm getting advice from some very uh, experienced operators. It's, it's my first time as a, in, you know, I'm, I'm relatively new in this game. But those who are experienced, I say, look, Bill, you be prepared. You be prepared to, uh, to negotiate. Uh, you haggle over those two days. What happens to your policies? You, your policies may be opposing. Look, uh, if, you, you, you've had uh, a bit of history. Uh, with Mr. Rambuka as well, we've gone separate ways. What happens there then? Um, when it comes to talks about coalition, you, you bring in your policies. Um, I have all these. And they have all theirs. Okay? There will be some compromises. And, and I will insist on a number, on a number of items that, we are, that I will not negotiate on. What are those items? The uh, Itoke issues. What okay. are those issues? Um, it, it's quite it's quite comprehensive here, Vijay. Yeah, um, very very comprehensive. Um, the uh, developments of the um, of the Itoke, the villages, uh, a resource tax for the uh, for the for the Itoke. Uh, I will not compromise on that. Uh, I will bring back the GCC. I will not compromise on that. Um, I will. Um, br I will. Recognize the UNRIP to you know to bring in the kind of sovereignty for the uh, for the uh, Itoke um, institutions. I will not compromise on those things. Free tertiary, I will not compromise. Tells, I will not compromise. So those are the stuff that I bring to the table, uh, and I will see what the other guys say, and then we we'll, you know we uh, we agree on uh, you know we also consider what they have, and we go from there. No, has there been any initial talks with any parties? I have a team uh, that is preparing for that. I have some very experienced people who are, you know, who are dra drafting out the, uh, the structures, the perimeters, on, uh, on how to go about this thing. So I have some people working on it already. And you will talk to anyone who crosses the line and have to I come to the table? I understand, uh, VJ. I just want everyone to be assured. I understand everyone. Uh, I want them to, be, to understand that during that 48 hours, that two days, 
It will be very intense negotiation, and you don't rule out anybody. Uh, you don't, you don't, you know, you... Thanks for clarifying that. I mean, you, you said it's game on with yeah. any party based on your issues that you hold close to your heart. Mm -hmm. Are you planning to... What if it comes down to negotiation? For example, you've got one here. Remove all decrees and acts that is discriminatory against it, okay? Absolutely. Which are these acts? Oh, you know, um, the GCC being one part of, part of it, you know, uh, the Lingolingoli, the Surfing Decrees, the Surfing Act, you know, the Surfing Act. There's quite a number. There's about 17 of them. That one, I will not, not negotiate. You would want all of them out? No, no. It's written here. Oh, it, Remove all. I want them removed. I want, yes, sir, that's uh, what I mean. Yeah, you want right. all of them out? All of them out. Okay. So, so when, when people talk about coalition and the fear that they don't want me to go into with someone else, Look at the policies. Look at the policies. See, some of these policies already would put a question mark as to if the other guys want to talk to me. You know what I mean? I've, I've covered a lot of uh, yeah. uh, I mean, negotiations, and then when it comes to that, you know, you can be, yeah. deal with anyone based on negotiations. So it's... I mean, you know, I want the GCC back. Okay? The other party says, we don't want the GCC. So there's no goal there, right? Yeah? So, I mean, but, but what I'm saying is that you come to the table, right, uh, and talk. But there are certain things where we do, we do not negotiate. That is very clear. And it would appear that uh, some parties will not talk to us because of our policies. Yeah? Um, so you cannot rule out anything here. You know, the, um, like I said, um, you know, it's open season during, the, during those two days. Yeah? We'll wait for that open season if it does become open season. Right. What is your focus on health? Health, uh, Vijay... Um, what are the immediate things you'll do regarding health? Immediately, Vijay, I, I'd, li I'd like to upgrade all the operating equipment in the, in the, uh, in the hospitals. Eh? I was a hotel here. Eh? In a hotel, the efficiency of the hotel depends on the operating equipment. You know, if, if you want to have good service in the restaurant, you make sure the kitchen has got all the stuff in it. Eh? Our hospitals in Fiji are not fully equipped. You know, we normally call these the PAS. Eh? The, how many, the PAS is how many seats do you carry, how many towers do you carry, three or four PAS. Eh? I want to make sure all the hospitals immediately are fully operational with the operating equipment. You go to, uh, you go to someone in Singatoka, you know, in Koromomo, yeah, for an x-ray, so no, come back next week, it's not working, the, the, you know, the x-ray machine isn't working. You go to a health center, something is not working. That really frustrates me. Like I said, as a hotelier, I want to make sure immediately that all the operating equipment in the hotels are working. In the CWM, out of the eight operating theaters, only three are functioning right now. See, you know what I mean? So I'm going to make sure if there's eight operating theater, the eight operating theater will be working immediately, Vijay. Are you looking at full heart care facilities? We've, had, we've got one of the biggest rates of heart attacks in yeah. this country, in, this, uh, in the world, based on our population. Heart care facilities, are you looking at, apart from heart surgeries, where you can provide permanent pacemaker services, more angiogram and stenting services, since it is quite costly for majority of the people in this yeah. country? Vijay, we will do that. How will you do it? Um, you know, the... Um there is now a partnership in Fiji. Uh, I, 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 you know, we question how well that is doing uh, with this PP something. We'd, we'd like to really look Public at... Public-private partnership. Yeah, we'd like to look at it very closely and make sure they deliver on these things. Quite a number of things they promised are not happening. Eh? We will revisit that, that, uh, that arrangement. Eh? And we did uh, simple things like dialysis. Eh? We'll provide it for free. I mean, I, I, I have friends, I have families, you know, who have been paying $200 per, per visit. I mean, that's $600 a week, you know. Um, that's about $10 million a year. And we'll, we'll, we'll do that for free. Mr. Avoka, your manifesto says, and we have just touched on it before this, but it, as you said, it's, it's a heavy part of your manifesto. Mm. That you will remove the decrees and acts that are discriminatory against the ETOK. Uh, when are you planning to do that if you do come in? Um, some of them uh, have become acts of parliament. Eh? 
You all, know, all decrees have become acts. Yeah. And you know, and you know how it is in parliaments, or how, you know, because the parliaments can create laws, uh, amend and, it, and amend repeal it, them, amend it and abolish and repeal them. And you know how it's done. Standing order fifty one, I bring it in on Monday. It's gone on Wednesday. So you'll bring the standing order fifty one repeal all. Absolutely, order. absolutely. The first hundred days will do a lot. Yeah. And which ones will you be repealing? I, I uh, there's quite a lot there, uh, uh, VJ. Um, Maybe you give us a list, and the next time yeah, you yeah, definitely if, if will I, come I, around if again I may, please. in um, a debate that you can. But I, I, I know list. one for sure. I saw my people in the Western Division, the surfing decree. Eh? The surfing decree, yeah. which has become an act. Yeah. What, what's your issue with that act? You know, people who own the uh, you know, the traditional owners, if people want to use the Ngolingoli for recreation, they must pay for it. And they are willing to pay for it. Like in Tabarua, like uh, in Amango Mangoa, like in Banga, like in many parts of Fiji. The operators are willing to pay for it. But this decree says, you know, you don't pay for it. It is quite, uh, I don't want to use the word stupid, but, but you know, really, I mean, that's what it is. I was a hotelier. If I'm willing to pay for it in my, in my resort to use that, um, you know, the waters in my... In, in Basically, the surfing area is open for people to go without being stopped. Right. But, you know, in, in an area like Tavarua, there is this carrying capacity. Eh? It can only take so many people at any given time. And because of that, it, it becomes exclusive to Tavarua. And it helps Tavarua become that icon in the, in the world today. And when Tavarua gets that, get, gets that, uh, that iconic stuff, it's willing to pay big money to the people of Nambila so and Momi. you are trying to have exclusive surfing yes. spots which the landowners get money from. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the asset. It is something that is unique to them. You said you revived the Great Council of Chiefs. Uh, why do you feel that it's important to come back? Uh, Vijay, it's the pinnacle of, of who we are as a people. Huh? A lot of... Um, it, it will not be the GCC that we had in 1997 you know, to decide on who should be the governor general and all that. This will be exclusive to the ETOK, yeah? And we can activate it through the ETOK uh, Affairs Act of 1944, which empowers the minister to set up any council that is beneficial to the ETOK. The minister of the day can do that. So we can set up the, the, the Great Council of Chiefs, again, under, and under, under the, uh, the Fijian Affairs Board and, and the minister, to oversee the affairs of the ETOK. TLTB, you know, they should be the ones who decide who sits in the board of TLTB. It's our land, okay? Um, there's a lot of cultural things that need to be strengthened. Uh, the village bylaws, um, uh, the issues with our neighbors, the Island, Solomon Islanders, you know, how, what is the status in Fiji and all that. This can only be addressed through the Great Council of Chiefs. Um, and, and, and uh, you know, the other things like disputes on titles and land areas and uh, a lot of a lot of disputes are not being are not being um, addressed today. So we need the GCC to move things along for the ETOK. Right now, with this government, a lot of things are kind of at a standstill, cannot move forward because people know that the authority that normally moves this forward is is uh, is not active today. That's why I want to bring I want to bring the GC to help move things forward. And there's no no negotiation on that issue. You Absolutely would, no you negotiation. Bring back the Great Council in its previous form or in a new form? Uh, very much in a new form. Uh, what form? And specifically to uh, look after the Itok uh, administration. Eh? The provincial councils come under the the, the GCC. The so you'll have the setup of the GCC and the provincial councils. The provincial councils, yeah. Uh, previously, the GCC had powers like to appoint the president, to elect right. the president. No, they don't, they don't happen. They don't happen. Uh, also, they, don't. Uh, they were part of the Senate appointed. Uh, will you bring back the Senate? No. Because no Senate, just Parliament? The 2013 Constitution uh, will take quite some uh, work to change. Eh? You know, you need to 75% in Parliament. And, and then you have to go for a referendum, referendum. and you 75% of registered We will voters. work within the confines of the 2013 Constitution. But we will explore ways 
to uh, to bring back the 1997 one, but you will try to get the 1997 constitution. We will back. we will look at ways to bring in some parts of it into into this one, um, but you know we want to hit the ground running. We want to make some changes. That's and not immediate. Not, not immediate. But it's part of your plan. It can it can happen. Down what the line. parts of the 1997 constitution? Um, I think the uh, the representation in Parliament is one area that we would like to uh, look into. Eh? Clarify, please. What do you mean? Remember the the allocation of seats um, based on ethnicity. Yeah, and, and you know, in that way, it, it was uh, there was this balance of uh, of other communities. So, how do you want it? Uh, look, I I, I I'd, I'd like to go back to that. Uh, remember, there was also that uh, multi-party leadership kind of stuff. We had uh, first of all there was uh, the 1997 constitution had uh, a specific amount of seats for yeah. Fijian communal, which was for the Itok vote for the Itok. <coughs> right. Uh, in Indian communal, which was the Indo Fijians vote for the Indo Fijians. Then you had 20 open seats. Right which made up 71 seats. 71 seats, right. And then you had then multi-party cabinet system where yes. you could form. Yes. So you're planning to bring I'll, that I'll, back. I, I, I kind of subscribe to that. I mean, uh, I, to be honest, um, I, I want to work within the 2013 right now. But then a part of me remembers that. And I believe it was, rep it was representative of the, of the, of the numbers of the, of the population in this country relative to the you know, to their ethnicities. Eh? Um, but then, you know, you do all that and you come together in a multi-party way. Yeah? So I, I, I like that. I like it in... Because, I mean, uh, everyone was assured of a seat in parliament, eh? every community. So bring back uh, ethnic-based voting for certain seats yeah. to maintain that percentage of seats in parliament. Right. And you haven't worked out the percentages as no, yet. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. And there'll be open seats on top of that. Yeah. So and everyone then, but, gets two votes again. Yeah. But then at the end of the day, you have the multi-party, you know, everyone, everyone becomes part of, uh, you know, has the opportunity to serve in the executive branch of government. One of my guys just came back from Rwanda and he saw how advanced the country was and they follow, and they follow that multi-party system. Now, how will you fund your new initiatives? You said you, for example, increase company taxes. To what? <coughs> if you can give some details. You have said you'll, uh, you will uh, look at taxes, fees, fines, charges. Mm. Where do people expect increases? Mm. Uh, VJ, the companies in VJ um, will be taxed uh, in line with the taxation in this part of the world. <coughs> Our company tax right now is 20% for uh, local companies, 17% for um, companies that are, that are headquartered in Fiji, and 10% for companies that are listed on the stock exchange, right? 20, 17, 10. It used to be 28% across the board. Everyone paid 28%. That was in 2012 or so. And we used to collect about $420 million a year. I mean, together with the PAYE and all that. With what has come down to now, it is below $100 million now, $120 million. I think it's even below $100 million now. So, Papua New Guinea, 30% corporate tax. Yeah? Tonga, 25%. Uh, Sri Lanka and everyone in the high 20s. New Zealand, 28%. Australia, 30%. Why is, why is Fiji at 20, 17, and 10? And you lose out that, that much, $420 million to now uh, around $100 million. So what will you take the company tax up to? 28%. 28% across the board. Across the board. What else will go up? Uh, we'll bring back the capital gains tax. Uh, there, there'll be a tax on dividends, which used to happen before they've been taken away. Capital gains tax used to happen before they've been taken away. STEM duty, the oldest source of revenue in this country, going back to the 1930s. These guys uh, repealed it two years ago. It used to bring in $80 million, eight zero. So we're not, we're not doing anything out of, the, out, of, out of whack, out of the ordinary. How about personal income tax? No, we won't touch that. 
Won't touch the threshold remains the same. Threshold is remains the same. I understand one of my colleagues has taken a threshold up to 40,000. Uh, we, we really have no issue with the personal income tax. It's the companies who, uh, who have been having a kind of a free ride in this country. No, I, I ask about personal income tax because everybody watching, they would want to know how does it affect my take home pay? It, we won't touch, touch it. it. We won't touch it. It will stay the same. It is the, stay the same. And uh, where else will you get the money from? Um, on on uh, on VAT, uh, what we currently have is zero zero VAT for um, for those basic items, uh, and then nine percent for um, for other items, and then fifteen percent. Eh? It, it is very difficult for FERCA for the uh, the tax saving guys to collect to collect on the on that kind of uh, three categories. Eh? We will make it simple: zero and ten. Make it simple. The collection is going to be more efficient and will translate to more collection for, for revenue. I, I have my tax consultants who are advising me on this and I, and I believe them. I, I've, I've, looked, I've seen what they do. And I've made comparisons and that's the way to go. Simplify VAT. And there are lots of, um, lots of uh, concessions that have been given over the years. We will relook at all that because when you have a lot of these concessions, you have something called tax planning. Eh? Tax planning is the way you look for all the loopholes to help you reduce your, your tax. Eh? And I believe Greece and Sri Lanka uh, had some bad experience with that. So we will, we will plug all the holes and uh, rationalize all the concessions that have been given over the years. Eh? So that, that, those are some of the things that we will be doing uh, to, to increase uh, revenue, um, Vijay. Thank you, Mr. Ngavoka. A final question again about retirement age. When will you implement that? You have said that uh, you'll take the retirement age to 60. There's a question. Uh, when will you do that? Immediately. Immediately. So a lot of immediate decisions there. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Ngavoka is also uh, uh, confirming to us tonight that uh, our leaders debate on December 11th, 7 p.m., uh, that will be happening right here on Fiji Village Straight Talk. He has confirmed his availability for that. There will be some other debates with other party leaders. So you definitely will have a few debates before you come to the other side of the bridge, so to speak, after the elections <laughs> and uh, thresh out issues on what matters most. So thank you again, Mr. Ngavoka, uh, for talking about your plans, about your party, how you're handling the situation in Sodelpa, uh, and saying that you're ready for action come uh, the next five, six weeks and also ready to negotiate if the need arises. Uh, according to him, it's open season. If uh, no party uh, gets 28 seats, that's, that's the magic number with 55 seats uh, uh, in parliament uh, after these elections, 28 seats needed to form government. If no absolute majority, Sadelpa leader, Mr. Ngavoka confirms, open season, negotiate, but with some conditions about what things can happen. Mr. Ngavoka will be back. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Vijay. Just a few issues before I leave. Tomorrow night, we have Unity Fiji leader, uh, Savenatha Narumbe on uh, Fiji Village Straight Talk, and uh, we'll join you then. Have a great evening. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess we started. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, question, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. Any, I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? Fiji First Why? cannot intervene into a personal Absolutely matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when he came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not you. Hand on your heart. It's him. No, you're a uh, joke. No, it's, you are a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. Don't bring it up. We don't. No, no, I gotta bring it up. You were commander. But yes, every but military officer and serviceman at the time was under your command. forgotten you trade them. Bulubinaka, this is Fiji Village Street Talk. I'm VJ Narai. VG Village Trade Talk with VJ Narayan, sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor, living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page.